Have you been curious as to what tools you might need when you start a furniture painting business besides your paintbrush and your paint? Stay tuned because I am going to tell you. Hey everybody, welcome to 10 Minute Tuesday. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, I'm a furniture artist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Every Tuesday we go over stuff in the business, whether we kind of flip flop. So sometimes we talk about things in the business. Sometimes we talk about things that will help propel your business. Either way, 10 minutes every Tuesday, that's what we do. So today I'm going to tell you about tools. Okay. So when you first start your furniture painting business, of course you need paintbrushes and you know, maybe paintbrush cleaners and you need your paint and your poly and all that stuff. But we're going to talk about the things that I use almost daily or at least for every project that our tools are power tools, hand tools, things like that, that will help you in your business. Now I'm not saying that you have to go out and get everything right away, but I will with this, this, um, with this list, I will put the most important things that I use first and then kind of go down from there. These are things that are options. Maybe try to get them later on in life. Uh, or later on in your business. And so I'm gonna start my 10 minute timer. Blah, hold on. If you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell so that you get all the latest videos as well. I do a weekly furniture video as well. So 10 minutes on the clock, we are going to talk about tools. So one of the most important tools that you need when you are doing furniture is a sander. So I use surf prep sanders. You don't have to do that. I didn't start with a nice sander. These are an investment, but they are worth it. So I have two of them. I have an orbital sander and this is what it does is it goes around in circles orbital. And this really, this rips the finishes off of the top of pieces if I'm wanting to strip them down. And then this is a three by four electric ray. If you are just starting out just get yourself an orbital sander. I, if you cannot afford a surf prep right away, I would highly recommend you look for a DeWalt. I have used Bosch and DeWalt and a bunch of other brands. I just, I like DeWalt a little bit better. I feel like it's got a little bit more power. Um, you can also look at the power and the wattage and, you know, RPMs and circle, all that stuff. There's things to look for. But when you're first starting, just get yourself a nice orbital sander, probably from DeWalt. You can grab one for under $100. It's worth it. It's make your life a lot easier. You can distress with them. You can strip things down with them, smooth your finishes with them. You will not regret it. So make sure you get yourself a sander. Next, most, second most important. These are probably both as important. So you need a drill, okay? Why do you need a drill? Well, so I have an impact drill and I have just a regular drill. So you're gonna want a regular drill at least. You see I have a drill bit on here. You are going to need a drill, one, because what if you wanna change the hardware out on your piece? You're gonna have to drill new holes. Two, let's pretend like this is a regular drill. What if you have a 12 drawer dresser and you don't want to take them all out by hand? Using a drill will help you put your hardware in and take it out. Also, if you've got any screws or things like that, the piece that I'm working on now, I took all the back off. So a, a drill is really important. One that you can, I can take this out and put this bit on. So a regular drill is really important for you to have. So that way you can have a drill bit so you can make your drills or your holes for your new hardware, or you can put a, um, a screw bit on the, the end of it, whether it's a Phillips or a flathead. So you need a drill, you need a sander. The next most important thing is actual screwdrivers. So here's a flathead. This is what they're called, flathead. And here is a Phillips. This is the star bit, okay? You're gonna want at least one of these. Honestly, you can get a set of them so that you have different sizes because your screws may be different sizes and you really want to make sure that you are using the right size for your screws. Otherwise you could strip your pieces or you could strip your screws. So, you know, it'd be who of you to get a set of these with different sizes, but you need a screwdriver, flathead, Phillips, okay? 
This has come in handy. This is a heat gun. This is by Makita, but you can go ahead and get, I think I started with a Wagner heat gun. And so they have different brands. It's really good for, if you guys have seen my videos of getting the gunk off, you could get stickers off. This can remove paint. Obviously when I'm doing my wood you bends, it helps with this. So a heat gun is really, really handy to have. I also use a hair dryer. So I have a hair dryer that's specified for my paint. It's got paint all over it. So, you know, you could get a heat gun and a hair dryer, but a heat gun is really important. A hair dryer is not going to strip your paint off. Um, so a heat gun is really important for you to have just in your arsenal. Okay, next. You need a hammer. Okay, you're going to want a hammer because First of all, what if you need to get, if you need to get any kind of screws out or nails out of stuff, you're going to be able to take it out here with the back of this, the hammer. Okay. And then the claw of the hammer. And then also, you know, sometimes I've done pieces where maybe the, the nails are coming out of the drawers or the back and I needed to hammer it back in to really secure it. So a hammer is always something really good to have. You should have this in your house anyways. Next. These are going to kind of coincide with each other, but measuring tools. So I have my measuring tape. Okay. This is for me to measure. This is really good for, you need to know how big your pieces are, whether you're putting it up for sale, people are going to ask you how big it is. Also, it's good for you to have, so you can measure your pieces, see if it fits somewhere. This is also great for if you're doing lines on a piece of furniture and you need to know how far apart they are, or if you're doing your hardware and you need to know where you're putting your hardware. This comes in super handy. I also have a straight ruler. This helps as well for those flat pieces that maybe, you know, because you've got your measuring tape, but this doesn't sit flat, okay? So you're going to want your ruler. And then I also have a flexible tape just in case there's any areas that I need to get into. So measuring tools are really important for you in your business. Another one, you want some cutting type tools. So you want scissors. And then I also have an X-Acto knife. So I'm putting these together because these, you know, you want an X-Acto knife, really, you really do. You never know where you're gonna use it. So an X-Acto knife is really something important to have. You can get it for a couple dollars and then you want scissors. Always want scissors. So you need cutting tools for your business. Now, you really want some needle nose pliers as well because what if you have staples that you need to get out, old hardware, things like this, this is going to help you. Also, it's got the wire cutters. You've got the little wire cutters right here, but you can also use this to kind of pull, like grab stuff and pull it out if you want. So a pair of needle nose pliers is really important for you to have. Let's see, what else? Oh, sorry, I have a whole thing right here. I'm trying to do by important. Clamps. You wanna make sure you get yourself some clamps. Usually these come in sets, come in sets of two and four. There's different sizes. They have some that are super big. So it depends on the projects that you're doing, but this will help for things that you are gluing back together. You're trying to secure stuff. You need clamps so that way it can hold it in place. And this is kind of like hands for you that you don't have. So if you, or if you're cutting wood, kind of like some of the projects that I do, those little, you know, beginner DIY, DIY projects, this will hold your lumber in place so that way you can cut it. So this is really important to have. Next is a square. You guys know how I feel about my squares. This is a brand new one. I had used a broken one before. This is a few dollars, under $10. This is gonna help you measure things out, make lines, things like that. It's just really nice to have. You also want some scrapers. So I have a plastic scraper, and this is good for putting, you know, filling, wood filler in, things like that. I also have my metal scrapers. This is good for some of my faux finishes, as well as scraping off some of those, re like the residue that they have or helping to scrape off that paint if you're using your heat gun. So these are really great to have. These are a couple optional things. Oh, this is really important. I didn't put this in here. These are not really tools. This is a supply. You really need, you need, you need, come on, come into focus. These are both tight bond. This is wood glue and this is a multi-surface glue. This is quick and thick. This is the wood glue. I really like tight bond. It's affordable. It's really good. So these are things that you're going to want to have in your supply box as well. Trust me, you're going to use them. So a multi-surface glue and then a wood glue as well, because you're not really sure. Some of your pieces might be plastic and you have to adhere something to it and wood glue is not going to help when you're 
putting wood on plastic or vice versa. So also here's a couple optional ones. So this right here is a T-square, okay? This is a miniature T-square. It's really nice for lines, measuring things. It's pretty affordable. They do have really big ones that are like $20 at the hardware store, but this is kind of an optional one. You may need to use it sometime, you may not, but it's just a good option to have. And then I also have my mini pry bar. So my mini pry bar has come into play the last couple things that I've done. What this does is you kind of hammer it in underneath something and you help pry it up. So this is really helpful if you, uh, you can see that I've used it quite a bit, but you can use it for like home, home projects and stuff like that too. So a mini pry bar is really good to have. There are a couple other tools that I would say would be beneficial to you if you are doing furniture flips where you're adding wood if you are maybe redoing the top of a piece, if you're just painting furniture and flipping it, these things really will come in handy, especially if you need to measure hardware, drill stuff, all that good stuff. Um, but if you are redoing pieces or adding shelves, you're gonna want to make sure that you get at least a jigsaw or a circular saw, and that way you can cut your wood, okay? Um, I have all the tools because I have built a lot of things, but a jigsaw is usually what I bring out just because it will cut the piece easy, quick, not a, not a super messy, and I don't have to plug in my circular saw. Well, a circular saw is a hand saw too. So um, a circular saw or a jigsaw are really good, but the circular saw is not going to go around curves where a jigsaw will go around, you know, kind of do curves, kind of like that one Ikea piece that I did. So those are just, those are tools that I would get if you're gonna be doing DIY stuff. Obviously the proper stuff to use would be a miter saw, table saw, things like that. But I wouldn't invest in those if you don't plan on doing a lot of crazy DIYs. So a jigsaw is something that, I think if, if I had to give you one power tool to do when you're redoing furniture, a jigsaw would be it because it will be able to cut holes in the drawer fronts if you wanna do something like that or it will cut pieces of wood if you want to put it on the top of a piece. So, and everything else that I told you will work. You know, you're gonna need a drill and all that other good stuff. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Those are just a few tools, a few, that was quite a bit. So start from the very first things that I, I told you and work your way down. Some of them you may never need. A drill and a sander, those two. If I had to pick my top, if I had to pick my top three, I would say a drill, a sander, and does a wood glue count? The wood glue. That really didn't match the other stuff. Drill, sander, screwdrivers. Because there are some things that you're not gonna be able to use your drill to get out. Some hardware, you're going to have to do it by hand. So. Hopefully that was helpful and thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you are not subscribed, my name is Kristana. This is my channel. Welcome to my channel. I am going to have a furniture video out here in a couple days. Till then, I will see you guys next Tuesday. Bye-bye.